A few people have left comments on my relay computer project asking why I put diodes next to the relays. If you've worked with relays before, you might know that these are just flyback protection diodes, but if you don't know what those are, I think it's worth it to spend a few minutes examining why they're needed and exactly how they work. It all comes down to the principle of electromagnetic induction. What induction means is that whenever there is a changing magnetic field near an electrical conductor, it'll cause or induce electrical current to move in that conductor. It also means that whenever there is a change in current in a conductor, it will induce a magnetic field around it. In other words, moving magnets can create electricity, and electricity can move magnets. This is the fundamental idea behind huge numbers of electrical devices, generators, transformers, relays, microphones, motors, solenoids, speakers, and so on. Now, everything electrical, every conductor, is also an inductor, but most of the time the inductance is small enough that we can basically ignore it when doing calculations. Where induction gets big is when you have a lot of electrical conductor in a small space, such as a coil of wire. In fact, the electrical schematic symbol for an inductor is a little coil. But you don't get all of this induction for free. Setting up a strong magnetic field takes energy, and it also takes time. When a relay turns on and current starts flowing through the coil, most of the energy from that electrical current is used to create the magnetic field that attracts the relay's armature. It's only after the field reaches its full strength that significant amounts of current begin to flow through the other side of the coil and back to the current source. This is why you sometimes hear people say that current follows voltage when talking about inductors or inductive loads. The magnetic field stores energy. Importantly, it takes time to store that energy. So now we know what happens when a relay turns off. Because the current stops flowing, there has been a change. Induction says that a change in current will alter the magnetic field. And indeed, when you change the current to zero, the magnetic field wants to collapse. But to do that, it has to dump all of its energy somewhere. That energy will go where it came from, the relay's coil. A diode allows current to only flow one way through it. The trick is to place the diode in parallel with the relay's coil terminals, but in the wrong direction. When the relay is on, the potential at the top side of the diode is 5 volts, and the other side is connected to ground. The diode is reverse biased. Current wants to flow from high to low, but the diode will only allow current to flow in the other direction. But now consider what happens when the relay turns off. Suddenly, a huge voltage spike appears on the coil's grounded terminal, which is also connected to the diode. The other terminal of the diode is no longer connected to a voltage source, so its voltage might as well be zero. The diode is now forward biased, and it will conduct current. The voltage spike causes current to flow through the diode to the only place it can go, back into the coil. In fact, the flyback current will flow in circles from the diode to the coil and back again until all of its energy is dissipated by resistance. The result is that no more harmful voltage spikes reach sensitive electronics that are connected to your relays. That's also why it's important that your protection diodes be physically close to the relays they're used with. That ensures they'll handle the voltage spike before it can harm other components. I hope that sheds a little light on the subject, and I'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching.